Hi there and welcome to Naturally Recovering Autism. I am your host, Karen Thomas, and I want to thank you so much for being here and being a proactive parent and getting the resources that you need to help your child to reach their optimum level of autism recovery for a happy, healthy, and fulfilling life, whatever that may be. Some kids, like my own son, had his, had his autism diagnosis reversed. Other kids who were nonverbal are speaking. Others who couldn't focus in a classroom when we're getting D's and F's are getting A's and B's. And others who were tantruming and screaming all day are calm and relaxed and happy. That's what we want, support for them and support for you as a parent. I personally know those challenges of being a parent of a child with autism. I've lived through it myself. I was told to drug my son and try behavioral therapies and good luck. We would be managing his symptoms the rest of his life. But I didn't want to do that. My background as a craniosacral therapist let me know the brain can and does heal. It is a scientific fact that you've got to be able to work with things that are affecting the brain, the toxic inflammation, toxins and inflammation. The gut controls the brain and the immune system. There are so many factors involved. And the co-infections, Lyme and mold and strep, as well as other detoxification, I would like to give you, first of all, a link to a download that you can start today to utilize for the top seven foods to eliminate from your child's diet to help them reduce the toxic overload and the inflammation, because these are foods that most people are eating daily and are keeping your child sick. So please go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash seven foods, just the number seven and foods, no spaces in between. Get that free PDF download and you can start implementing those things today. And with that, we're going to do today's episode is about uh, helping to balance some of the body's chemistry, including the good fats versus the bad fats. Because we cells are made of fat and the brain is 60% fat. So we're eat, we have to make sure that we're eating enough of the good fats and avoiding the bad ones. Now, a lot of people think some of the bad fats are healthy fats because we're sort of shown that corporations like to tell us that because they do make money off of them. But it's important to understand that, the difference between the two. So I'd like to clarify some of that today so that you can again start feeding your child some of the better choices and eliminating the bad ones. Many people have come to fear anything with fat in it, and the diet industry says to avoid all fats. But this is really false information because we need fats in our diet, but we need the right kinds of fats. There are good fats that are vital to feeding the organs that need them, such as the brain. And without the right kind of those fats in our diet, our brains will not be able to function properly and can even be harmed. So between about 1910 and 1970, Americans went from eating 83% animal fat down to about 62%. And during the same time period, the consumption of sugars and processed foods increased by 60%. So the consumption of butter went down from 18 pounds per person per year to four pounds. You know, we've been falsely taught that all fats are bad. And unfortunately, this caused vegetable oils and refined oils to increase by 400%. Margarine, not butter, margarine is the bad, is linked to building bad cholesterol and heart disease. And some of the other things like butyric acid from butter is actually very beneficial in fueling the integrity of the GI tract. So be sure though to only eat organic butter. Now this is also if lactose is tolerated uh, because you can pull some of that, uh, that lactose out by making your own ghee, which is one alternative. But butter itself, generally, for most people who don't have a sensitivity, is actually a healthy food. And there's such thing, again, as good fats that are essential to us. Now, one of the things, and especially important in autism, are omega-3 fatty acids. And I've done an entire episode that I will link to in the show notes to the episode that I did on the omega-3 fatty acids, because they not only protect the brain, but they help the brain to function. And they're called essential because the body cannot make them. We have to get them from foods and we just don't get enough from foods that we eat, like salmon and sardines, 
we're just not eating the quantity that would give us the amount of these positive good fats from the omega-3s that we need. Most of us have heard of omega-3s as uh, fish oil, and that's commonly the main source there is a marine algae formula that is excellent. And again, in that show, in that, the show notes, I'll give you that for the, the omega-3 fatty acid in case you're vegetarian. And in that case, you actually need even more because you're really not getting the animal fats in your diet that are healthy. And so we're going to, we can go into that a little bit further, but I wanted to talk to finish up on the omega-3 fatty acids here. So DHA, it's a it's a, a an acronym for docosa, docosa hexanoic acid. So DHA is important, really important in brain health, synapse health, assisting the brain circuitry, its ability ability to function properly. And several studies have shown that low levels of DHA fats actually increase depression, and that increasing its intake relieves it. And I'll even link to a study in the show notes on that. There are multiple studies out now around that. Mother's milk, of course, is excellent. It contains 50% fat, mostly the saturated fat, and brain development relies on saturated fat and cholesterol. Again, we're taught all cholesterol is bad, and that is not true either. So again, it's got to come from the good sources. So why would the American Heart Association begin recommending low fat and low cholesterol diets for children? It's just plain wrong. Many baby formulas are also low in saturated fat. So avoid these products. Many of them now contain a lot of heavy metal toxicity and glyphosate toxins. Anything you get should of course be organic. Make sure that they're not having any of those bad chemicals in them as well. And a study uh, has been shown that a failure to thrive in children with low fat diets. So if you're not getting enough diet, fat in the diet, you are not able, your brain cannot often function properly. And so the animal and vegetable sources of saturated fat provide sustained energy, the building blocks for cell membranes, hormones, and other chemical processes in the body. They also assist in the absorption of the necessary fat-soluble vitamins, which are A, D, E, and K. Now, you've heard me talk about some of these before, especially D, vitamin D, as in dog, is one of the absolute best flu fighters and virus fighters available out there. It's natural, safe, your brain needs it, your body needs it, and it can help you fight any of these viruses. And especially right now, that's really important. So again, if these good fats are helping us to absorb that the, the good vitamins when we eat our foods or take our supplements, then we want something that can help us absorb them even better. Sometimes we are taking good supplementation, but our body, especially our children with autism, their bodies cannot absorb them properly, especially when the gut is still healing. So be very knowledgeable of that. Sometimes I hear from parents that their child's eating a lot, but they're still hungry or they seem like they're not thriving. And that's because the gut, gut is not absorbing the nutrients they need from those foods for multiple reasons. There's leaky gut syndrome, there's candida, there are possibly parasites. A lot of issues that are going on there in the gut. Again, make sure you get that seven foods guide that I talked about at the beginning of this episode so that you know what foods to avoid. Animal fats, organically grown, are essential to our health. And vegetarians don't like to hear this, I know, but it's difficult to supply the brain with enough essential non-synthetic B vitamins. And you heard me say non-synthetic B vitamins. Those synthetic B vitamins that they're adding to foods, when it says fortified with B vitamins, those are bad. And they can cause a lot of hyperactivity in your kids. So really be aware of that. I've also done an episode not that long ago, pretty recently, on the B vitamins, which I will link to in today's show notes, which again will be at naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash 106 in case you're out driving or on your morning run. The non-synthetic B vitamins and healthy fats uh, are uh, part of that, uh, the, what vegetarians don't get also if they're on a, a strict animal-free diet. 
And saturated fats are not the cause of heart disease or cancer. Eating good fat does not affect your cholesterol or contribute to excessive weight gain. You actually need cholesterol to maintain liver health. Short chain sat saturated fatty acids such as butter and coconut oil are easily absorbed for quick energy. They don't need bile salts to break them down because again, if the liver and the gallbladder aren't working properly, Sometimes our kids cannot break down some fats and they can get a little nauseous. You might even notice if you eat heavy fats, you can get nauseous. And that's why you want to eat the good fats and also make sure that you're supporting your liver and enzymes can help as well. And I'll give a couple of links to a couple of things that can help you uh, in today's show notes as well. And uh, also the other beauty about especially coconut oil and butter it, especially coconut oil is very antiviral and antibacterial. So really important there and is a candida fighter, which is nice too. Monounsaturated and saturated fats are best. Too much polyunsaturated fats are bad. So some good fats to know about butter, fish, avocados, coconut oil, macadamia nut oil, and extra virgin olive oil. Again, always should be organic. Animal fats, broth from homemade meat and fish stock is exceptionally healthy for the gut. Animal fat contains the nutrients that nourish the cells of the gut lining, which helps to keep it healthy. And it also helps to reduce inflammation in the gut. And with that said, a diet that is excessively high in saturated fat is not healthy either. Processed meat, such as bacon, will kill off bifidus, which is some of the good bacteria in the gut. And our kids with autism have, have limited good bacteria in the gut because they have bad pathogenic bacteria that has overcrowded in there. And that's one of the reasons that why it's so important to be on this really good diet, again, from that seven food guide, so you're not feeding the bad bacteria or causing more inflammation in the gut. Eggs are a really good source of nutrients. The entire egg, white and the yolk, are both healthy, healthy food sources of protein, vitamins such as B, D, and E, minerals such as zinc, and the amino, amino acid tryptophan, which is helpful for uh, calming and sleep. And it builds the, neuro, the neurotransmitter serotonin. So that's really important. And serotonin is really big in mood stability. So again, remembering the good fats, olive oil, cold pressed and organic, extra virgin is excellent, coconut oil, avocados, flaxseed oil, walnuts and walnut oil, macadamias, those are some good sources. Uh, if your child doesn't have a nut allergy, you wanna be aware of those as well, just, just in case some kids do. And start out slowly with fats, even the good ones, because you wanna make sure Again, that their gallbladder is processing the fats okay and that they don't get a little nauseous at first. So just start out slowly and, and uh, watch how they feel after they eat. And, and also if you've mixed it in with other foods, uh, you might be aware of which food might be causing them any symptoms when the, when the liver and gallbladder are congested, so is the pancreas. And these organs also, they all help to digest the fats. And this means good fats as well as the bad and the fat soluble vitamins. Again, we talked about how sometimes we're not, we're, we're taking in vitamins or nutrients, but we're not, uh, our children, especially with autism, their guts are needing so much work um, and they're ill and not absorbing the nutrients. So that's something to make sure that you're aware of as you're healing the gut up. And that starts square one. I mean, there's multiple pieces to it. Square one is starting with that seven foods guide and the diet. And I know I'm very aware of, of the diet being a transitional process. Your child is literally going to be addicted to many of the foods on that list. And you'll think, oh, that's all my child eats. There's no way I can change their diet. It is a slow transitional process, but it really must happen for optimum results. There are a couple of great choices to assist with the digestion of fats. There's a company called Pharmax, and they make a product called Pure Pancreatin, which assists with the absorption of oils in the blood. And it's found in most health food stores, and I'll give a link to it as well in the show notes. And remember that our omega-3 fatty acids are oils, so they need to be properly absorbed to get to the brain. 
So taking pure pancreatin or Houston enzymes, who I've also interviewed in the past, and uh, Dr. Houston is excellent, and I highly recommend his enzymes, and I will link to that in the show notes as well. But they make a product called Lipozyme. So when you see the word lipase, L-Y-P, means fat digestion, okay? So Lipozyme is to help with the digestion of fat. So if your child needs that, that uh, Houston Enzymes makes a product called Lipozyme, or in my membership program, we use Trienza, which is also one of Dr. Houston's products, because it's broad spectrum. It helps digestion of proteins and fats and, and, and carbohydrates and various things. So it's kind of nice that if you need very specific, if you want to get more specific, you can add in a little extra lipozyme that can help with the digestion of those fats. So that's really important too because uh, you, you know your child's not just eating one food either, they're eating multiple foods. So you have that choice there. And again, I'll link to things in the show notes, which will be at naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash 106. The bad fats, let's talk about those for just a minute too. Trans fats are hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated fats. They're also known as plastic fats. These chemicals were created in the 1920s to help prevent food from spoilage. Spoilage lowers profits. Unfortunately, these chemicals also preserve the cells in the body. They create a plastic film around cells, making them ineffective. And when the body signals that it's hungry, glucose and insulin are, are released. When they reach the cell membrane, it's become impermeable to the glucose and insulin due to its plasticity. So you're blocking things from getting into the cells, even the good things that need to get in. The cell continues to send a message of hunger, but receive nothing. This is why people who eat trans fats continue to gain weight. This causes insulin resistance, which also leads to type 2 diabetes. So if you know somebody who's having an issue with right on the border of type 2 diabetes or has diabetes, this is a really important note, which a lot of people are unaware of. Or if you eat too many of these bad foods, the, the, the bad trans fats or sugars and things that will lead, you can lead to type 2 diabetes, which can be reversed with a good diet. You don't have to live your life on medications. Type 2 diabetes is very tameable with, uh, with, and reversible with a really good diet. You have to know what you're doing. Trans fats are also, also will cause the liver to become plastic. Now, again, our liver, which will be our next episode next week, liver support is essential. The liver is our organ of detoxification, and it cannot properly remove toxins from coming through it from, if the trans fats are coming, but causing the liver to become more like plastic. And this causes the immune system failure and chronic diseases like fibromyalgia, the liver also makes bile, which is responsible for digestion of fats, and bile is stored in the gallbladder. So the gallbladder really has a lot to do with the digestion of fats, and it's very commonly not working well in people. Without enough bile, then you get that nauseousness that I talked about. And in order to repair the liver, you have to eat good fats. About 75% saturated animal fats, and about 25% polyunsaturated fats, such as fish oil. The liver has to be able to handle these fats coming in to heal. So if nausea occurs with the fats, you'll need to repair the gallbladder and the liver because the gallbladder is backing up due to a weak liver. So they affect each other. And this is really, really common, again, with our kids in autism, Many are born actually with a congested liver that is already congested from toxins they got in utero. The, the baby has uh, absorbed a lot of the toxins that mom has had in her body and, and was exposed to while she was pregnant. So with today's environmental toxins, it's very important to be aware of this. What we do in my membership program, one of the big things we start with stability of creating a strong foundation. We wanna make sure that you're starting with that the diet changes, the gut healing, and supporting the detoxification pathways. 
before we even move on to further things because it is so vital uh, to be able to, to support those pathways while you're detoxifying because you might even know be, notice behavioral outbursts in your child when you begin even just diet changes because as the bad bacteria start to die off, hence the term die off in their gut, then those bad organisms like candida, as they die, they will release more toxins into the system. If your child's already backed up with toxins, their body really can't take many more So you, without some good support. So uh, bind, binders for support are essential and, and supporting those detoxification pathways. So uh, in, in order to help with some of the bile uh, in for, for the gallbladder to, to help support it with meals and, and backing it up with a weak liver and poor fat digestion there are some bile supplements that you can take as well and there's one that i have found to be extremely effective for um, supporting gallbladder uh, weakness and nausea with food and that is called af beta food and it's a company called standard process so that's another option uh, to, as I mentioned, the enzymes earlier that can help with lipase. But if beta food is actually a food source and uh, of a supplement, and uh, Standard Process is a very good company, if beta food I have found personally to be very, very helpful uh, when I notice that my gallbladder is kind of feeling a little weak and I start to feel a little nauseous when I eat. They're really, really small pills and they can be easily crushed down with a pill crusher or you can mix them in with a smoothie because I know our kids with autism can't take, uh, most of them won't take uh, a pill source. So I usually have things to offer you that are in either powder or liquid form or if it's in a capsule, it can be opened up and poured into a food or a beverage and mixed in. These are very tiny pills um, but they are in a in a little pill, so you can but you can crush them up and uh, or put them in a smoothie and blend them in. That works well too, um, if you find that you're needing that. Uh, you can uh, muscle test, of course. Muscle testing is something we do a lot of in my membership program, as my members know, because you need to know if a product, any food or supplement, is acceptable for your child, and you want to know if they also have. Uh, if the food or supplement is acceptable, but then also the dosages, because every child is different. And that is really important to, to remember that as well. So um, back to some of these bad fats, um, the cell membranes can become plastic, including brain cells. They offer uh, the body plastic with, you can offer the body plastic or healthy fats to to balance them out because the bad fats will overtake the good fats. So if you're giving your child, let me give you an example. If you're giving your child healthy omega-3 fatty acids, they're essential oils or fish oils. We need those, they're really good fat. Now, if you, your child's eating French fries or you've got uh, you're using vegetable oils or canola oil, which is a big no. A lot of people have been taught and the industry has tried to teach us canola oil is safe. It is not. It is a very unhealthy oil. You eating in those, taking in those bad oils, they override the good oils and actually then deplete what good oils we have in our system. So it's not just a matter of giving our body good fats and still giving the bad fats and thinking, oh, well, that'll take care of it. It's the opposite effect. If you are putting in bad fats into your diet, the good fats are getting overridden and they, they will actually deteriorate and, and diminish the good fats that you have in your body. So that's really important to remember too when you're, uh, when you're working through any of the, uh, the, the issues with, with balancing out the fats. Um, one other thing too, trans fats can lead to depression. And this is very common, chronic fatigue, attention deficit and foggy thinking. The bad fats can impair the body's ability to build and maintain adequate amounts of neurotransmitters, which regulate things again, like mood, sleep, appetite, ability to focus. This is really, really important to know. And according to public health nutrition, those who ate more plastics or more pastries 
in fast food were 41 more 41% more likely to develop depression than those who ate none. So you can see directly its effect on the brain. And again, those neurotransmitters like serotonin. So you want to lower your intake of these polyunsaturated omega-6 fatty omega-6 fats. There's a three to six, omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, but we eat so many more sixes, six omega-6 fats in our diet that again it overrides the three. So that's the problem is we're getting way more in our in our diet of the sixes than um, than it throws us completely out of balance and and it, and it starts to reduce the amount of omega-3s we have. So the bad omega-6 type fats include things like corn oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, peanut oil, soybean oil, and canola oil, as I mentioned as well. These oils, they promote inflammation, which is a big part of the problem with our kids, the gut and the brain inflammation. They suppress the immune system as well. In most restaurants, when you're eating out, especially fast food restaurants, but most restaurants are using the bad fats for cooking and frying. So it's really important to know that too if you're eating out or when you're cooking in your kitchen, you wanna make sure you're not using any of those fats I just mentioned. Those, some, a lot of those vegetable oils are really, really bad news. So cook with animal fats, including butter or non-hydrogenated coconut oil, coconut oil, because they won't alter uh, in chemical form with high heat as well. So that's important to know. Some oils will change to bad fats uh, when they get at high heat. Coconut oil is one of the most stable, so that's really nice to know too. So when the beneficial cold pressed oils such as, and, and continue with the beneficial cold pressed oils such as olive, flaxseed, avocado, when they're heated, they do change from unsaturated fatty acids to trans fat if you, change, if you take them to high heat. So just be aware of that one. Coconut oil, coconut oil is stable pretty much at any temperature, so that's really nice to know as well. So those are some really key things for you to focus on to just remember the differences between good fats and bad fats and what the differences are in health and behavior. And you can see too how they affect the liver and our detoxification pathways. So again, making sure if you're cooking at home or eating out that those oils are are, you're not getting a lot of those oils in, in the diet at all, especially in your child's diet, because we want to do everything to support the liver as possible. And all of us, if, if you didn't, if you weren't tuned into uh, my podcast in the month of November 2020, I did an entire series on heavy metal detoxification. Environmental toxins are so huge in our environment today, and we are just bombarded by them by multiple types pesticides in our food. So again, eating organic, detoxifying with natural supplementation, having binder support in the body, which is very important. So if you missed any of those, you can go back and look at those episodes there. Uh, they would be uh, in November of 2020. Those That was on specifically heavy, heavy metal detoxification and natural safe solutions. But we also have some good um, episodes that we've done on just environmental toxins in general. We all are exposed to them from our air, our water, our food, and it's important, you know, that you've got a really good water filter uh, on your water system. Don't drink tap water. You're eating healthy organic food sources because you don't want pesticides and glyphosate, toxic herbicides in your food or your child's food, and the things that can continue to keep the gut ill and harm it, cause inflammation. And, uh, and prevent your child from getting better, and you as well. It's about the whole family getting better. So rather than just changing the diet of your child with autism because you're trying to help them, it's important to change the diet and the health of the whole family. Because when the whole family is healthy, then everybody is healthy, right? Because we can all get irritable, we can all lose sleep, we can all uh, you know, have problems focusing and thinking. And, you know, we don't want to live our lives just sort of hanging in there or with, with extreme fatigue or just being okay. We want to live the optimum life. And that's what we want for our kids as well, because everybody deserves a chance to live the healthiest life. And we do have control of it. The key is you want to take some responsibility and that's up to you. It is your choice. So 
that's what you want to think about is what you will do now. What changes will you make? I hope this has been helpful for you. I again will leave all of the show notes at naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash 106. Thanks for being here with us. I hope you have a great week and you're staying healthy and happy and enjoying the holidays and we will see you next week.